Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer with education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring UTM content filtering with JWeb Learning Byte. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right to the example. There's a few devices I want to point out. We have user one, which is connected to VSRX one, which is connected to the internet. And then in the internet, we have a internet server, which we're going to use to test our content filtering. And so what we want to do is we want to configure UTM content filtering using JWeb to do a few things. We want to block any executable files that user attempts to download from the internet server. So just really the internet in general, we're going to use the internet server as our test server to make sure that this works. And then we want to display a custom message for the user when they attempt to download any executable file. So let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface for VSRX1 and test this out. So here is the JWeb interface for VSRX1, and we need to go to the security UTM content filtering workspace. Now, a thing I do want to point out here is we are under the configuration main workspace, and we can hover over the ribbon on the left to see that, as well as we can see that up top with the actual workspace navigation bar. Okay, so under content filtering profiles, we can click the new button and then we can name the profile. We'll call this CF for content filtering, JWeb-LB for learning byte. And we have a few different options here. We can first specify a block extension list. If we select that, we just have the Junos default extension and none. So right now we don't really have anything configured to block just files that are the exe or executable extension. And so with that, we could go back and create a custom object, but right here we have some available content types, which are common file types, and we can select the exe type and press OK. And that adds it to a block list. And so then what we need to do is we need to create a UTM policy. Click the policy option, get to the UTM policies. We can cl click the new button, and under here we can go to content filtering. Oh, first we need to name it. We'll call this UTM-LB. And then we need to select the content filtering profiles tab. And here we are concerned about HTTP traffic. So we can select the CFJWeb LB content filtering profile. And if we wanted to, we could also select different profiles or the same profile for other protocols like FTP with upload and download, IMAP and SMTP, POP3, things like that. But we don't need that for this case study. And something else I want to point out is with a UTM policy, you can do multiple profiles. You can do antivirus profiles, you can do web filtering, anti-spam profiles, and content filtering profiles all within the same UTM policy, but that would be a huge learning bite. And so we're not gonna do that right here. We're just going to focus on the content filtering profiles. And then we can click okay. And then the last thing we need to do is select or create a firewall policy rule that references the UTM policy. So under security firewall policy rules, we can select the create button, give it a name, we'll call this utm-lb. And under source, we can select user zone, that's fine, any address, destination, we want to change that to the internet zone. And then under advanced security, we want to set the action to permit, which allows us to select the UTM policy. And then under rule options, nothing we want to set here. So we click finish, and then the summary will pop up and we can click okay. Things look good there. If we scroll down, we can see that the UTM rule is specified. The UTM LB policy, that is, is specified under advanced security. That's what we want to see. So we can click OK and then commit the configuration. So now that the configuration is committed, let's jump to the user one device and see how this works. OK, here is the user one device. We are currently at the internet server. We can refresh the page again. Here's some files. So we have a few different files. So let's see what happens when we click the test file exe. It gets blocked, that's perfect. But notice how there's no custom message. We didn't specify custom message, so we need to go back and do that. So let's go to the internet server again, try to download a txt file, and it downloads just fine. So okay, things are looking good, but we need to jump back to the JWeb interface and configure those notification options. All right, so here's the JWeb interface again for VS or X1. Let's go ahead and go to UTM. And then let's go to content filtering. 
and then we can edit the policy, select it and click the edit button. And then there's a tab called notification options that we didn't explore before. We can select that tab. We have a few different options here. We have protocol or message for the notification type. We want to select message here because we'll give a message directly to the user. And notify mail sender. Yeah, we're using HTTP, so we're not really worried about mail traffic here. And so here we can set a, the, uh, the custom message. We're going to say no exe files. Select OK. And let's commit that configuration and then jump to the user one device. So we're here back at the user one device. Let's refresh the page and attempt to download that file again. And perfect. Uh, we have no exe files. Our custom message gives us the other information that was there. That's great. If we go back, we can download the text file again and everything looks good there. Now, I do want to show you the configuration for doing a custom object and blocking exe files. So we're gonna jump back to the JWeb interface and kind of run through the same process again, except using custom objects with the UTM content filtering. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface again. So let's go to custom objects, which is under UTM. And then we have to go to the file extension list tab. And then we can click the create button to add a new file extension list. And we can call this, we'll just call this uh, cf-jweb-exe. And then we need to find exe in the list. Move it over. Granted, we could move multiple file types over here. So this is great if you want to have a custom setup where you're blocking different types of file types. Maybe not just exe. Exe files are just easy to show in the situation. So we'll select OK. So we've created that. And now we need to go back to content filtering. And we need to edit this. And under here, we need to remove exe from the block content type section. And then in the block extension list, we need to select CFJWeb exe. And then we'll click OK. Click OK again. Now everything else is already set up. The UTM policy, we've already set up the firewall rule. So we don't need to mess with any of that. So let's go ahead and commit the configuration. And then jump to the user one device. So here is the user one device. Let's refresh that web page and let's attempt to download the test file. And great, we're getting the same behavior as with the content type blocking as with using a custom object. So that's great. Let's just download the test file.txt file and yep, that works great, perfect. So one last thing I do want to show you is if we go to the monitor section and then security, UTM, content filtering, we have some statistics and under here, we have one under based on extension list. That's because remember at the end there, we changed to an extension list to block the exe files. So that's that one block. And then it shows exe files two, And that has to do with our content type blocking to where we blocked two of the exe files with just that content block list where it had the common file extensions and we selected exe. So here we can see that we are actually blocking the files from the VSRX1 perspective as well. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we discussed how to configure UTM content filtering using JWeb, and we also demonstrated how to verify UTM content filtering functionality using JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.